Three. So Harley Quinn is the animated show that is on Netflix, uh, where you have uh, HBO Max. Oh, I'm sorry, shit, sorry. Uh, HBO Max. I, I still got Netflix on the brain. Um, where it is focused on Harley Quinzel, um, who was for a long time known as the Joker's kind of uh, henchwoman girlfriend. girlfriend. Uh, uh, but now that she's kind of more burst out, being a more lead, you see in a bunch of stuff now, being kind of her own character in the past uh, years or so. Um, and this here, she has her own animated show, which is on HBO Max. Uh, Kaylee Coco, um, who comes in as Harley Quinn, uh, who people might know her from The Big Bang Theory. Um, she stars here as a titular character. Um, if you remember the past uh, season, um, it kind of left off with her and Poison Ivy forming a relationship. She admitted her feelings for her. Poison Ivy, who here is voiced by Lake Bell. Uh, so this season deals with a lot of their relationships, kind of the ups and downs of it, um, kind of how they remain together, uh, which is pretty interesting to see. Um, so. Uh, I was a fan of this series, uh, you know, got recommended by it. Uh, I forgot who did so, but yeah. Um, at first, when I saw the trailer for it, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, it looks a little try hard, um, just with a lot of the violence, with a lot of the cursing. But actually, watching the series, sit down and watching it, uh, I was really surprised by it. I think the, the writing is really funny. Um, I think it's really sharp. Uh, the commentary is really good. Um, a lot of great interactions with a lot of, they do with a lot of the DC characters, like you also have the, the crew that um, uh, Harley and Ivy are a part of along with Clayface who's voiced by Alan Tudyk um you have King Shark in here um you also have uh to who else is Dr. Another? Psycho Dr. Dr. Psycho is in here who's voiced by, by Toby Hale from uh, Arrested Development yeah um yeah and King Shark voiced by Ron Funches and you also you know you get you know you get along uh yeah you got along Kite Man for a bit uh and frank the plant voiced by jb smooth mm, yeah who does a great performance here um and then you have also kind of some other you know you know not only focused on the villains but you see some other superheroes kind of come in most notably batman and the bat family who was introduced more in this season where you have batgirl and you have nightwing nightwing who's voiced by uh harvey uh what's his name harvey Gullion. How are you doing? Who's people? Doing from uh, what, we, what do. we do in the shadows. Guillermo. Yeah. Uh, my, 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 my beautiful boy. <laughs> um, yeah, you have there who they extend a little bit more of the bad family with him. Uh, Nightwing with Bad Girl and with a uh, Damian Wayne Robin um, here. Voiced yeah. by Jacob Tremblay, which I just love that casting so absolutely <laughs> yeah um so that, i thought that was pretty good that they did a little bit more of that um you also see catwoman in here who's voiced by shania lathan uh who makes for a good excellent mm. kind of voice choice for catwoman um and i'm gonna kind of pass it around here see what kind of you all thought of this season nick what were kind of your thoughts on this season three all right so this third season the show is is kind of danced around with the will they won't they of of ivy and harley and they right out the gate they say no they are staying together no matter what and their relationship is really cute uh this season has some of my favorite episodes of the entire show and some of my favorite like newer takes on the dc universe especially what they do with batman this season who is voiced brilliantly by Diedrich Vader, who did the voice on Brave and the Bold. Mm. Yeah. Also has one of my favorite takes on the Joker ever, who also voiced, voiced by Alan Tudyk, where he's like sort of a supervillain, but not really anymore. And he's just kind of become a suburban dad. And that might be my favorite take on him. It's uh it and it's amazing and way better than anything Todd Phillips did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so many like in jokes and references to like they Yeah episode starts with like, like a sitcom opening where it's just all of his famous quotes. Hmm. Oh yeah, the uh the six episode Joker to Killing Vote, which I did find utterly fucking hilarious. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of great episodes, I think, uh, in this season, like they, what they do, especially the episode. I um, mean, we're doing spoilers uh, for this mm -hmm. season, by the way, so we can kind of go into depth a little bit more. Oh, and, 
um, for all the episodes. Um, yeah, um, and also the episode where they do kind of a Harley Quinn evaluates Bruce Wayne's mind. I thought that was a great episode. She plays. That, uh, yeah. That, that was, was my was... personal favorite. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a show that um, I think the elevator pitch for it was, what if the writers for Archer or the Venture Brothers took on the DC Universe? And they do that, and they like have fun, they take the piss out of it, but they still have such a tremendous amount of respect for for all of these characters. And this has one of the greatest portrayals of Batman ever. And I put it right up there with what uh, Matt Reeves and Pattinson did earlier this year. Mm, nice. Oh, absolutely. Like, okay, I will not mince words. Batman's my favorite superhero. Mm -hmm. In fact, Batman is like my favorite character of anything. And my personal favorite episode is, yes, that psyche look into him. That is titled Batman Begins Forever. <laughs> just, just brilliant. Because the reason I do love Batman so much is that he can be what you want who the viewer the reader the player needs more or less and to me batman ha and, and, and to me uh, this episode uh like justifies like to me why batman is my favorite because it shows he's a superhero that was born out of depression a very mm -hmm. deep dark depression and what he's done is while he was overcome by the pain and the grief he fought through it and built himself up to become something else to become to, to leave that behind to truly help people to because the core mission of batman is to make sure what happened to what what happened to Bruce Wayne at the age of eight doesn't happen to another eight year old. That being said, this version of Bruce, oh my God, has some serious <laughs> shit going on. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, if you and, thought that Pattinson's oh, take on the character was in desperate what, what, need of therapy, this guy is the poster child for it. Uh. It it very. Very much is, but what I will say is, but, but uh, just to go back, uh, I do love this show because mm -hmm. Harley Quinn it, it is just such a fascinating character, and I'm also so fucking glad that in one way or another, DC finally stopped dragging their fucking feet and actually mm -hmm. admit and give the people what they want. Fine, here's Harley and Ivy dating. Here you go, queers. God damn it, leave us alone. Mm -hmm. Because they are both canonically bisexual. And mm -hmm. there is, and let's face it, ever since that very first Harley and Ivy episode of Batman the Animated Series, it's just like, come on. Mm. Come on. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> come on. Mm -hmm. So, Fuck yeah, I was very excited about that. But what I do love in this season is two aspects that really make this one of my favorite pieces of Batman media in a while. And it to fo and the first thing is to focus on our main character, like especially in the first two episodes. The relationship between Harley and Ivy is it's very honest and true. It really is. Throughout the season, it completely is. But I feel like those first two episodes were just great examples of it. Because, uh, l let me just say this. Dating while gay is a very, very different experience I had while dating than while dating straight. I will completely say this up front. I'm not even going to throw in the trans aspect. I already did that on a whole different review on one of us. Mm. But it, it it really shows, like, there's something deeper 
here. I, I think it's mainly, but, uh, you know, uh, mainly the societal thing. But here with Harley, it's that she is still pretty goddamn damaged. But, but this season, we get even more into Ivy's baggage. Like, her deal. Like, especially that Frank heart to heart she has with Swamp Thing when they're both inside the green. Mm. Which was a great episode. Where like uh, Ivy. Oh, that, that was a great episode. Lo I, I would never thought. Oh, Richard Splett from Veep is gonna be the voice of Swamp Thing. Hell <laughs> no. Hell, I like this. And, actually worked. And they and they gave Swamp Thing a man bun and a beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which honestly, I was like. Not even mad. I could see that. <laughs> uh, but the Harley Ivy relationship felt honest because you you got two really chaotic combustible forces in these two. I mean, Harley's a little bit more outright, but mm -hmm. Ivy is one that builds and builds, and they really do complement each other. So well, I I adored just the quiet romantic moments between them, and I did. And, and by the way, I stood up and uh, applauded my computer when I read that. I was like, "No, we're not gonna fucking break them up. We're not gonna see Harley back with the Joker because that was an abusive fucking relationship." And and if you're wanting that back, maybe go look in a goddamn mirror. Mm. Yeah. So. Which they do reference uh, in this episode, uh, you know, kind of what's going on in her relationship right now with uh, Poison Ivy and, and what's kind of what happened with her relationship with the Joker, which I thought was a nice touch in one of the episodes. Um, and I think, you know, you have this series here, uh, which, is, it t you know, takes a really good funny look, uh, you know, at most of these DC characters, uh, which me and Nick, we talked about when we were doing the Barbarian review, we talked about like how, you know, comedian, you know, they're able to really understand maybe these elements because they have to really break it down and make, you know, make it work and, and on a kind of fundamental level um, of what makes it good and kind of able to do that. And uh, we brought up Lego Batman as an example of that, of like, that's probably the best Batman movie to understand Batman out of any probably Batman movie. Um, and then with this show, it kind of does uh, similar things, you know, with the Harley character, with the Poison Ivy character um, that I was thought was very good and seeing their relationship, uh, you know, progress and, and kind of go through these ups and downs um, throughout the season, I thought was very interesting and how they really, you know, act like a real couple, you know what I mean? And you see kind of those things and they don't just fall yeah. into the typical pitfalls that you'll see in most common relationships that you'll see on TV. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciated that. And yeah, the other aspect of why I love this so much is the bat family. I mm. now, I loved The Batman from earlier this year. You two have already just seen me go on about it. But uh, as much as I did love that, I am so sick of fucking broody, dark loner Batman. <laughs> All right? What I've come to love, what I've come to honestly enjoy way more is the Bat family. Even if it has Red Hood in it. Whatever. Uh, that... That Bruce Wayne was able to build himself a new family. Mm. And honestly, like, that that Webtoons comic, The Wayne Family Adventures, is also just like, that's exactly what I want. Well, that and also uh, the, the, the Bat Family skits that uh, Panda Red does on his mm -hmm. TikTok channel. I really love those, and those are just like, yeah, that would actually be what happens in canon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so, like, just seeing all the great dynamics, like, oh, Batgirl here trying too hard, Nightwing's back from Bloodhaven, <laughs> and he's trying to out brood Bruce and yeah, Damien. He, yeah, his, yeah, his initial intro into the show is that oh, he's hilarious. become an edgelord. <laughs> Like, I, and given who it is, it, I would have <laughs> believed, like, oh, so this is what happens when Guillermo will become a vampire, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's going to get that all, like, he's going to get that broody. 
<laughs> mm. <laughs> Possibly. And also, you have Damien uh, just being an asshole because he's Damien. And he's that. also a teenager. And he's a shitty teenager at that. Yeah. Damien's an asshole at every age. I have <laughs> evidence above me to collaborate. But, <laughs> yeah. But and I and what I really did love was the psyche of Bruce. Again, to go back to Batman Begins Forever and like, okay, every joke about oh Batman's so Bruce Wayne's so rich, how come he don't do first off there's <laughs> they, fair, address, uh, they address it in one of the best lines in the oh, whole uh, show. Okay, <laughs> that line was hilarious. Like you could start by giving them a fo- affordable housing. People pay for housing? Uh <laughs> But like, but like, people just ignores is that you know in the comics he does do that. Bruce Wayne mm-hmm. is paying for the city. He helps fund scholarships. He has rebuilt infrastructure. He has created rail systems, and so on and so forth. It's like you just—he's helping the city <laughs> in every way. Hmm. Huh. I, it's just like that joke has gotten so fucking numb to me where it's just like, ha, ha, ha. but this show actually makes it funny because it addresses it in some new ways. That is very interesting and exciting. And again, leads to some very damn good jokes. Mm. Yeah. And it's interesting. They do something that we've seen a zillion times, which is, you know, the Martha and, and Thomas Wayne death and they make it, you know, again, they make it interesting. It's like I think. the ti- t- it's like the Titanic. We've seen how it goes. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Uh, Nick, um, did you have any kind of issues with this season at all? Uh, for me, I think the first three episodes, while they are great, I do think the show kind of was spinning its wheels when it initially premiered, or or at least uh, this third season, because so much of the uh, first two was building to getting Harley and Ivy together, it almost felt like a now what? Mm. And the now what is seeing them actually be in a relationship and work through a lot of their baggage together, which I thought is a really nice touch. Oh, Mm. I agree. Uh, Mainly on working their baggage. I only felt them spinning their wheels in like the third episode where the whole uh, Gordon running for mayor was just like, I just, whatever. But that really starts to pick up and really does pay off well in the Killing Vote episode. I gotta say, glad to see more just deranged, unhinged Chris Maloney as <laughs> the saddest, <laughs> most as pathetic <laughs> Gordon Impossibly ever. Impossibly realistic Jim Gordon. <laughs> I, I, I did even love they got an SVU. Big, and it's like, Ah, uh, Harvey. Those those crimes are considered especially heinous. Mm-hmm. Harvey, crimes like those are considered especially <laughs> heinous. You gotta let them go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and one of my favorite line deliveries. It's like, no fucking way, cause we're in too deep, and I'm trying to keep up above in my head instead of going under. Instead of going under. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some forty one was playing at the car on the way here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, some fo- yeah. Harvey then some forty ones. <laughs> biggest number one fan Son, <laughs> i love it Cannon. Uh, yeah i i will say uh maybe wasn't quite uh yeah they didn't give too much for king shark to do mm-hmm. i mean he had a neat little episode of his own that was fine mm-hmm. but i'd say if anyone outside of harley and ivy and the gang got really something good or interesting it was what clayface was doing since Mm -hmm. uh james gunn voiced by james gunn is directing (laughs) a biopic uh a a hard wayne's gonna fall (laughs) on thomas wayne which Mm. actually does play nicely into the events towards the end of the season and actually into Bruce's storyline as to why he is so very needy, clingy, and also very emotionally stunted. Mm. Yeah. 
And you see that, yeah, with the relationship he has with Catwoman, with yeah, with Selena, and how that. I mean, he's he's simping hard. I mean, he's he's simping hardcore. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, they're... in fairness, they should have they should have let that this Batman go down on Selena. <laughs> I would have believed uh, it. They should now, have. It, in fairness, I sent for Catwoman do hard. True. I sent for Catwoman hard as well. It's it's also, yes. yeah. I mean, mainly it's, it's, this yeah. Catwoman, but still. Uh, and which one is that, Michelle Pfeiffer? That's Michelle Pfeiffer. Look, th- this this is the <laughs> woman that this is the woman that this is the woman that broke my egg and made me realize, <laughs> oh God, I'm I, I'm a woman, and also so 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 very gay. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I like. Uh, I mean, a lot of people do great voice performances. I think that's all. Uh, also another thing that Ellie adds to this show, which we see like voice performance sometimes for actors, it's it's not the easiest thing to do. We saw that in What If, um, you know, and I think that a lot of people do a great job here. Shania, uh, Shania Lathan as Catwoman, Christopher Maloney as Commissioner Gordon. Um, Jordan spoke about something that kind of leads into one of my criticisms with the show um, of like there really besides Harley and Ivy, there really isn't really much else there. I think the relationship like with other characters. Well, at least this season. Yeah, with this season in particular, I don't think there's really much for the other characters, like with King Shark or Clayface or um, with Commissioner. No, Cla- well, Clayface gets considerably more to do, given his subplot of having to play Billy Bob Fortin after he gets Billy Bob Fortin accidentally killed. <laughs> yeah, uh, which I thought I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty funny that they uh, did that there. Uh, but yeah, I thought was some of the kind of and then seeing him act as Billy Bob Thornton as Thomas Wayne and still have all of Clayface's inflections. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and it it really was interesting to see all that happen. And yeah, uh, I love the more dearth of DC characters we got in here. Like we got John Constantine, voiced by Matt mm-hmm. yeah. Ryan. Uh, Sam Richardson, as we mentioned, voiced Swamp Thing. Yeah. Which I thought, very nice choice. And we even got Mm -hmm. Carrie Walgreen as Plastic Griffin Newman from The Tick as the Mad Hatter. Mm. (laughs) And, uh, Larry Owens as a very different but fascinating take. On the music meister. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a nice little kind of, like I said, really delving into the DC kind of characters, all the B list, C list, D list oh, yeah. type of characters that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, Rogue's Gallery that you have of the Batman comics, which, again, I think this shows appreciation and love for a lot of stuff they have um, for the kind of playground they're playing in, uh, which is nice. Um, how would. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say two other standouts because they get more to do in this season. Andy Daly as Two Face. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who I, I think deserves all the medals for having to put up with James Gordon for a goddamn <laughs> campaign. Yeah, I'm me. more used to, how could, I'm more used how to could spelling you? things out for. <laughs> Seriously? Too, it's in my name. Uh, <laughs> and. And Rachel Dratch as the most unhinged, off-the-cuff, fucking dick-down Nora Freeze. <laughs> mm. Which is, I never thought I would be able to use dick-down to describe Nora Freeze, but here the hell we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it is so weird, so funny that that is the running joke with her because she has been frozen for so long and her husband just died. So she is going out to fuck everything. <laughs> and you know what? I say go get Good it. Good for her. Yeah, get that dick. <laughs> uh, or them vines, apparently, because her and Swamp Thing end up together. Oh, yeah. Mm, uh, yeah. Mm. Um, no. How would you all compare... Okay, I'm going to stop before... I... Okay, I'm going to stop myself <laughs> from thinking about swamp dick <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh i don't want to give alan more ideas to come back oh <laughs> uh how would you all compare this season to the past seasons um 
I'll say better than season one. Mm hmm. But in terms of the second season, which I thought, uh, uh, honestly, I've been thinking on this all day. It's personally my favorite season. Like this. Oh. I mean, it it is kind of neck and neck with season two. I cannot lie, especially where, <laughs> you, you know. In season two, we pretty much had a giant Hot Wheels chase. Or, no way, that was the first <laughs> season. Anyway, anyway. Uh, it's neck and neck with season two, but I'll just honestly say season three, for me, is my personal favorite. This really is solidified now as one of the most underrated TV shows on right now. It More people do need to be seeing it. It mm -hmm. is... And, look, DC Comics is what got me hooked into nerddom, more or less. Mm. All right? Now, I, I'm a woman of both DC and Marvel, but I have to give a slight edge to DC because that's what got me started. It's what, again, where my favorite character is. And I absolutely loved how much deeper into DC it got and how much more fun it made of itself. Like, I, like, I think back to, like, how good Family Guy was for a bit, mm -hmm. and now I'm thinking, no, this is way better and smarter, because, so, it, because, yeah, society ha has changed in such mm -hmm. a way, and this is one of the best, you know, shows of the moment, but also... This show can be used very well as, like, help, you know, some people can get help to kind of move on from the things that have affected them in the past. I mean, that's the main crux, you know, storyline for Harley Quinn. But don't forget, yeah, she is a licensed damn good psychiatrist and is able to help Bruce. Mm. Yeah. I, so, I, yeah, I, 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 what I love so much is how well it mixes uh, inside DC humor. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and a great relationship. Not just that, but a, this is very important. A very healthy queer relationship. A very healthy, normal, messy, queer relationship between Harley and Ivy. Representation does fucking matter, people. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And seeing that was incredible. I mean, Kaylee Kuko did such an amazing job as Harley. But once again, the, the pretty much show stealer for me is Lake Bell's. Poison Ivy, who is just incredible, especially this season. Mm. Uh, I loved it for own fruit. And like I said, uh, I think Batman Begins Forever might just be my favorite episode of the series now. Mm. Okay. I love that. Yeah. So what would be your rating? For this? I mean, you might as well just probably Oh. Uh, I'll give it an A. A? Okay. Yeah. Strong tune in. Strong tune in. Oh, hell yeah. Um, yeah. Nick? I uh, forgot about so the race. For me, <laughs> yeah, for me, I think the show does kind of drag a little bit at the premiere, at the during the first three episodes, where it is I do feel it's kind of spinning its wheels a bit. However, this has some of my favorite episodes of the entire series in this in this one season. Like uh the killing vote uh, batman begins forever and the last three episodes are incredible they're so funny some incredible gags some great voice performances and just shows a a love and appreciation for the world of dc comics that we have rarely seen if ever i give this a strong tune in this is probably the most underrated comic book show that very few people are watching mostly because i'm guessing the show because it premiered on dc universe which like five people had i'm being one of them <laughs> yeah. oh i i was one of them too yeah. 
But yeah, I'm happy that it's on HBO Max now to a bigger audience and it's renewed for a fourth season, especially under the reign of walking ingrown toenail David Zaslav. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so you give it a strong tune in uh, as well then, Nick? Absolutely. Um, for me, um, hmm. I think it's kind of maybe one of the weaker seasons for me. I wasn't as big on it maybe as the first couple of seasons. I think the first couple of seasons, I think the difference was I felt like there was really more of a kind of a goal with those two seasons as opposed to like a journey there. Um, I think as opposed to maybe this one. Um, like the relationship, I think when they finally got together with uh, Harley and I, I do agree with Nick to some of his point where it seemed like kind of the first kind of the beginning of it, it was kind of spinning his wheels a little bit of kind of now what now what are we going to do? Um, and then, you know, uh, you know, Ivy's plan of ultimately of like, again, you know, terraforming Gotham, terraforming the planet still. Hurt. Yeah, pretty much Project Genesis them. Yeah. Um, again, that was, you know, again, we've seen that a lot with with kind of Poison Ivy and kind of some of her stuff is her whole big thing is just terraforming everything, terraforming the planet. Um, so, yeah, but I, I, I did kind of like that, though, um, with the kind of relationship stuff. And I think some of the side characters is not really a whole lot of th- that they do like with king shark um i think a lot of part of that also with the two seasons was the crew that they had that she kind of rolled with um i think you know they kind of did so much bouncing off each other and there's still some of that here uh but i don't think as much as probably on the season things i really like but there's still yeah. some, there's still some great episodes like i said batman begins forever i think it's a good episode um <clears throat> and then also the episode where they do the uh, uh the killing vote i thought was great they, they bring in like yeah the- the court of owls which was a nice thing they do that oh my god i i <laughs> i loved what they did with the i loved what they did with the court of owls i'm a big court of owls fan i i have been like that was one of the few bright spots of that shit period known as the new 52 <laughs> but i was like ooh, court of owls what are they gonna do oh they're just orgy oh it's okay. an, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's an which honestly which uh, which honestly, <laughs> I kind of actually do believe in canon. They would legit have like mm-hmm. some bacchanals and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought that was good. But uh, yeah, so for me, I would kind of give it just a light tune in for me. Um, still thought it was good, but not probably as strong as, on it as Nick or uh, Jordan are. But uh, no, so- and I get that. And you did bring and you did bring up something that made me. You know, again, I, where I said see, this season was head and head with two. The mm-hmm. big thing about season two was the cast chemistry. Was you, you know, because you did also have Kite Man, who does appear here. So, uh, mm-hmm. so by the way, uh, to anyone saying, "Oh, well, Ivy just should have stayed with Kite Man," first off, do you hate Joy? Secondly, <laughs> Kite Man. Look, we find out Kite Man's doing just fine. I mean, he's getting mm-hmm. his own spinoff. He'll be fine, okay. <laughs> you stop. You stop trying to push comp. You know, compulsory heteronormative. Blah, blah, compulsory. Yeah, that. God damn it! I know these fucking terms of my community. <laughs> compulsory heteronormat <laughs> heterosexuality onto people who don't fucking need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was the What was the woman what? he moved on with? What was her name? What was her? Oh, Golden oh, Glider. It was Golden. Yeah, uh, Golden Glider, aka uh, Lisa Snart. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Captain Cold's little sister. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, and and, and also like uh, Doctor Psycho isn't a main character here. He's he, he's in a recurring. Yeah. Bit because I don't because I do imagine Tony Hale had another project going on. I don't know what, but eh. yeah. Anyway, uh, but, but he, does I, a, uh, he does appear with is a great gag yeah i know i yeah i agree he he yeah he's in like the last three episodes which Mm -hmm. is perfect because like i said uh i like how he's even still just a sniveling little shit and even still much an asshole it's like oh i guess nobody remembered the rules from last time (laughs) (laughs) which I mean, to be fair to him, they clearly fucking didn't. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah. 
but uh yeah uh yeah i think yeah i do miss kind of that cast chemistry and everything like that but uh yeah i mean still a good show though still the show don't oh yeah still still uh. great and like i said this whole season just might be one of my favorite uh bits of batman media mm. in, a, in a while Pro- maybe better than the batman of this year but and mm-hmm. you already know how much i love that movie so yeah Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. Yes. So, all tune ins all around for Harley Quinn season yeah. three. Um, Hell yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jordan, Jordan, you want to tell people uh, all about your links, all about where they, people can find you, uh, all your information, oh, uh, all this stuff? Well, you can find me on oneofus.net. And you can also find me on Twitter, even though I'm on a bit of a small hiatus from there at the moment mm. but uh well i have been i'm i'm actually about to be a bit more active on there so uh you can find me there at joe woco j-o-w-o-c-o because i'm clever like that <laughs> instagram j-o-w-o-c-o eight mm. nine right. and yeah that's about it yeah uh, and did you already mention uh, one of us.net that you uh, do reviews there? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm on one of us.net. My most recent review was that of Confess Fletch. Yeah. Uh, well, it's. <laughs>